the psychic phase. Now in this phase, your psychers that you've taken in your army, if in fact you've taken them, get to try and mess with the warp and do some really weird, crazy and fun things. Each psyker knows X amount of powers, and you can find this in your data sheet. Every psyker knows smite as a base, and usually two additional powers, although sometimes more depending on the power of the psyker. To manifest a psychic power, the player rolls 2d6. They need to equal or exceed the number on the spell that they're trying to cast. So let's try this with smite. We're going to say that Grandmaster Voldus wants to smite the Demon Prince. Now we know from the smite rule that I've just put up on the screen, he needs a 5 plus to do so. He scores a 10, so the smite goes off. However, an enemy psyker is allowed to deny X amount of powers a turn, usually 1. So the Demon Prince is now going to attempt to deny that power. He must roll greater than the number that I did. So the Demon Prince would need to roll an 11 to do so. He rolled a 10, which equaled it, but unfortunately did not exceed. So the smite goes off, doing d3 mortal wounds for 3 mortal wounds on the Demon Prince. Now interestingly, if when manifesting a power, such as smite, I rolled an 11 plus, I could have done d6 mortal wounds to the Demon Prince. So there's some really cool things that you can do that just add extra damage per game, because mortal wounds are absolutely great. But we'll go over those later in saving throws, etc. Smite can only be manifested on a 5 once per turn. Every time you cast it, the cost goes up. So for instance, this Librarian now wishes to smite the Demon Prince, but because Voldus had already done so, the Librarian now needs a 6 instead of a 5, and it goes off. The Demon Prince has already denied, or attempted to deny, Voldus's power, and can only deny one power per turn. So he can't deny this now, doing another three mortal wounds. So between the two psychers, that Demon Prince has now taken six mortal wounds, which isn't bad going. Something to mention when casting psychic powers is Perils of the Warp. So if I rolled for a power and got either double one, or I then got a double six, I would have periled. When a psyche unit suffers perils of the warp, it suffers d3 mortal wounds. If a psyche unit is destroyed by perils of the warp while attempting to manifest a psychic power, that power automatically fails to manifest. If a psyche unit is destroyed by perils of the warp, then just before removing the last model in the unit, every unit within 6 inches of it immediately suffers d3 mortal wounds. So let's say, for instance, that Spaldus was on one wound left, and he decided that he's going to cast a psychic power, and he rolled a double six. He now suffers d3 mortal wounds for one mortal wound. Now that will kill Voldus, and because it kills Voldus, every unit within six inches of him suffers d3 mortal wounds. So that can take mortal wounds off these characters. So when you're placing psychers in your army, obviously a lot of psychers are taken to buff your units, so you try to keep them close. Just bear in mind that there can be drawbacks to this, as if a psyker perils and explodes, it can do a lot of damage in your back ranks, where you've nestled that psyker with lots of units around. It. <laughs>